again, we don't know the answer to those questions. And the answer to those four questions will give us 36 potential outcomes. Really though, the first two questions are what are important. So those two questions will give us really just nine potential outcomes. And we could actually do a nine by nine matrix if we wanted to, which is a little silly, but we could try it. We could do a nine by nine matrix of what happens in each scenario. So we can do uh, over here, we could do val, and that's, um, it could be zero, a billion, or 500 million. And we can do, going down, um, we can do a Voxogo, right? And that's going to be either 400, 600, or 800. So depending on those um, outcomes, we kind of get three different pieces. And what's nice is that you notice I haven't even looked at any clinical data. I haven't looked at anything. So I haven't even thought about what are the probabilities of these things happening, which is really important. But I've just said, you know, forget the probabilities. What, what happens if to the stock if this happens? All right, so we're going to put a Valrox uh, thing in here. And let's just assume, as I said, that Valrox is just a zero. That's the easiest forecast. That Valrox will never get FDA approval. And we have Voxogo kind of going to 700 million. So let me tweak it a little just so it lands at 600. All right, so 600 by 2030. And the valuation is $75. All right, so let's say Voxogo um, doesn't quite make it that far. It only goes up to say 400. Um, then we got $68. Okay, and now let's have it sort of do even better than what we thought. Have it get up to 800 million and we get $81. All right, so that's all the options for Voxogo. Now let's have Valrox get up to 500 million. So this is sort of a niche product really uh, severe hemophiliacs, maybe start to use it. Um, FDA warnings, maybe it gives you cancer, who knows, um, which I think is a, one of the things that's happening there. But that's, that's sort of it. All right, so in that case, um, we've got a stock that's worth $99. So we're including that Valrox uh, or Voxogo still does 800. So that's $99 a share. Not much upside uh, from where it's at, but certainly better than the first column. And then let's do it for if um, uh, Valrox gets over a billion, which means it's kind of a popular product, but not like super popular because there's a lot of people with hemophilia. Um, but let's just assume that that's what, that's what happens. Now we get 117. And some people, if you're a big biomarin bull, you might say, well, why not do 2 billion or 3 billion? Well, yeah, you could. You certainly could. Um, let's just try that for, as they say, giggles. All right, so with uh, 2 billion, they would do, it would be $154 a share. That'd be a nice upside, right? All right, and you can see that um, it looks like you lose $6 a share, right, for every 200 million. And you lose $7 a share for that 200 million. So we could just do, be really lazy and just do that. <laughs> and then be really lazy and just do that. All right, so those are the options for Biomarin. It could be anywhere from 68 if Valrox isn't so great um, I'm sorry, if Valrox it completely is a zero and Voxogo doesn't sell that great, it's at 68. And 68 is you know, a pretty good discount from where it's at now, but that would be kind of the worst case scenario, I would say, because um, uh, Voxogo is already quite on its way to, to doing at least 400. Um, so that's only a 24% loss. So that's, that's pretty modest loss for kind of a worst case scenario. And that's why I like kind of like biomarin stock, right? Because you have that safety. Now, in a more, um, you can say you can call this delta, I guess, from the current stock price, right? And you could just do that, right? So you can lose 
maybe in the worst case scenario, only a couple of these are even red at all, right? Like most of these are are actually kind of kind of good. So the only upside, real though, really comes if if uh, Valrox sells a lot, and um, you kind of need Valrox to to be into the stock, uh, or you need the base business to grow a lot faster than I'm letting on. So let's make a think about Valrox and let's try to understand what the heck is going on there. And that's really the big question. For a while, some people thought Valrox could sell as much as three or four or five billion. Uh, they don't have brand names yet, um, but they have this crazy generic name, Valoctogene. The octo comes from factor eight, interestingly, right? Octo means eight. So Valoctogene. Uh, I don't know why they've used Val, but it could be related to the amino acid valine, which you see a lot. So octo is eight, gene is gene. Roxa parvovec, I don't know, but parvovec is something that you do see with uh, AAV viruses, which is what this is. So I don't know where they got the roxa or rox, but a parvovec, I think, is the USAN suffix for any AAV virus. So anyway, this is for hemophilia A. The mechanism of action is AAV, I want to say five, it is the serotype, AAV5 uh, gene therapy. Okay, and now we're going to look sort of at clinical trials and stuff like that. Um, so I want to, the number of people that have hemophilia is pretty important here, but let's take a look at, and they've done a lot of research uh, about how do you target those people and so forth. So they just submitted their BLA, that's good news, and they have a PDUFA on March 31st, not too far away. So I'm going to write regulatory submitted. Uh, let's see, accept BLA accepted 10 12 2022 PDUFA 3 31 2023. And so, right here, you have what's called a binary event, right? The FDA could say yes or they could say no. That'd be a really big deal either way for Biomarin. And again, you have this kind of payoffs that are possible based on what, um, what might happen, right? So if the FDA says yes, it still doesn't mean it'll sell well. It, it's up to doctors and patients to use the product, but it certainly means that the zero is out of the picture. Just how much will it sell is the question, right? So could it sell 500 billion, 2 billion, et cetera? Uh, we'll see. But again, you can see the Biomarin's are sort of like, even though it's a young biotech company that's not that big, it's pretty slow company. You don't see huge amounts of variation here. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of a bit of a boring company, and I don't think that's such a bad thing. Um, again, they have a pretty good track record of, of going, this guy Hank, uh, who's pretty good, pretty good track record of going from uh, the beginning of a program to the end of a program with success. Um, so they did this trial called Generate, uh, which is a pun on words, phase three, generate, because they're generating factor eight. That's what's the problem with people with hemophilia. Um, so we're going to go through kind of the ups and downs of this whole situation. Um, it says here, no participants have developed inhibitors to factor eight, thromboembolic events, or malignancy associated with Valrox. Okay, um, that's interesting. 63% have AST elevation, not a big deal, I don't think. Um, ALT, AST. Um, let's see. One in 10,000 people have hemophilia. So it's one of the biggest rare diseases. Uh, a little bit of a misnomer, right? So if you do the US, right, you have what, 330 million people live here? Is that right, Alexa? 330, all right. So if that's really one in 10,000, which I don't think it will be, that's 33,000 Americans have hemophilia, right? And so what do you think the price of the product would be? Could it be a million dollars? That'd be $33 billion. Now, not everyone's gonna take it, right? So maybe 10% of people take it, maybe 20% of people take it, and then you divide that over, say, 10 years. So it's 660 a year. What do we have in our matrix? That's kind of in between the here and here. So once these people take this drug, they're kind of cured, right? So the 33,000 people, you have to sort of think about like, well, every time somebody takes it, you can kind of remove them from um, the patient pool. So let's take a look at that. 
So this is the patient pool, and we're going to put this at, say, 2023. And we're going to say uh, Valrox treated. Okay. So we're going to say, I don't know, 500 people take Valrox to begin with. Then they're removed from the patient pool. So the patient pool is now a little smaller, right? And then maybe 1,000 people take it this year. And again, the patient pool is going to be a little smaller. And then there's other treatments like this that are curative for hemophilia. And so some of those companies are going to take a little from the patient pool too, right? And at some point, there's just not much left in the patient pool, and they'll probably start shrinking a little because it'll be harder and harder to find people who have hemophilia A, which is a good thing. But it's maybe not such a good thing from Biomarin's perspective. Um, so anyway, the price is the other big question here, and you can kind of make a two by two matrix here as well. Um, so this is a pricing at a million dollars, million dollars per patient. And the company's actively said that they, they plan on pricing it higher. I think they've said they could price it as much as $4 million, which would by, make it by far the most expensive drug yet. And compared to Avexis's drug or Novartis's drug for spinal muscular atrophy, which is 2 million, and that's for a really, really fatal disease with really no treatments. Um, you know, it seems like that would be too expensive for 4 million. So I would say closer to a million. Now, remember, this is only the U.S. patient pool. So you can see that if you add the rest of the world, you're really starting to get something that looks really exciting, right? Like this is a really exciting um, uh, product, right? Could you um, see this drug selling 2 billion, 3 billion, 4 billion, 5 billion? I mean, that would be amazing, right? If you're a Biomarin shareholder, you know, let's see, I don't know. There's more of a $3 billion number. You can see the share price being 180. Now you're talking about the stock doubling. And then four billion. I'm going going hog wild here. Um, I don't think they'll sell four billion, but you never know. The current factor eight products for hemophilia sell quite a lot, so maybe they will. All right. So that would get you two hundred nine dollars a share. All right, so you get even more than a double. So I don't know if that's what's going to happen to Biomarin. That's what the research is for. That's what you got to look into really carefully. This, like I said, this is a, a gene therapy. So it's a virus that's been engineered to go into your blood, in this case, your liver, really, and change out or, or install a new copy of this uh, gene for factor eight, which is what people with hemophilia A are missing. Um, but it's not that simple. Uh, it's actually much more complicated. Uh, again, you know, one of the problems with this drug or this gene therapy is that the, the amount of patients in the pool can never really reach negative. So if you think about like, well, what's the longevity here? You, you will start to approach a patient pool that's getting smaller and smaller. And the percentage of the patient pool that they can draw on is going to be sort of capped. Let's say they can get 5% of the patient pool. What you're going to notice is patient pool is going to start to go down. In fact, revenue will sort of peak as that uh, that patient pool drops. So, so it's kind of an interesting way to look at it is you're not going to maybe get the same terminal value. So really, really um, interesting situation there.